All right, engineers, as we've been talking about all of these different cranial nerves, we're going to move right into it, starting off with type. We've said that some of these nerves can be sensory, some of these nerves can be motor, and in this case, for vestibular cochlear, which if you're looking at these words and they sound familiar, we'll talk about them in a second, this is a type of sensory nerve. So if we're looking at this and it's a sensory and we see the words vestibular and we see the word cochlear, let's break it down really quickly as to what the function is. We have our ear here. As we have our ear canal coming down to our tympanic membrane, eventually we go on in our, our eustachian tubes and then we have our cochlea here. Our cochlea has the cochlea with the uh, semicircular canals and we can see that the vestibular branch of the vestibular cochlear nerve goes up here to the semicircular canals where the cochlear branch goes to the cochlea, right? And if we've learned anything from anatomy, we understand that this has to do something with balance and it has to do something with hearing. And that's exactly what the vestibular cochlear nerve is for. The vestibular branch is dedicated to balance and equilibrium. And our cochlear branch has to do with our ability to auditory process and interpret, so hearing. Essentially, that's the function that we have for the vestibular cochlear nerve. We're talking about that balance, that equilibrium, that inner ear, and then we're also talking the ability to interpret sound, right, to be able to hear. But the main focus of the vestibular cochlear is where we go into the different tests, right? That's where this is a little more extensive. This is where when we're with our patients, do we know how to do these tests with our patients at the bedside? Or if there is something at the bedside that we've noted really quickly, on an auditory test, maybe by whispering in the ear or doing the, the little finger like rubbing where they feel that, and they, I mean, they hear that. Is it the same on both sides? This is a little more in depth, and these are the tests that you may see on an NCLEX or on a nursing exam. So let's quickly go over them. We have the Weber and the Renee test. The Weber test is where we use our tuning fork. If you haven't seen this before, it's uh, made of metal and we have a little handle here. And what we can do is we can take the ending of the tuning fork and we can hit it you can just hit it right here on your hand, you can hit it on your forearm, some people use their knee. You don't need to hit it on anything hard, just something really soft, and these will vibrate and they emit a noise. For the Weber test, we're going to take the tuning fork, we're going to activate it or get a little vibration going, and then we're going to take the end of it, this end here with the ball, put it on the patient's forehead. And you're going to ask them, does it sound the same in both ears or is one ear having more sound than the other? The result or the normal test should be that it's, it feels like it's in the middle or it feels like it's equal to both ears. If it's not, then we can further investigate for that patient. So to recap really quickly with the Weber test, you're going to place it on their forehead. They should be able to hear the sound equal or midline, meaning equal in both ears, or it sounds like it's coming straight from the middle of their head. That's considered normal. With the Renee test, this is a little different. What we're gonna do here is, is a combination, okay? So we're going to take the tuning fork again, we're going to strike it, and then we're going to take the process or the pointy end and put that onto the mastoid process of the patient's ear, or mastoid process of the patient's side. So you can do it from their right side first and then their left side. The first time you do it, you're gonna strike it, you're gonna put it on their mastoid process, and then after three seconds, you're gonna turn it and put this end towards the ear opening, right, the ear canal. And what they should be able to tell is, is it, is it sound louder when it's on the mastoid process or does it sound louder when I'm holding it outside your ear? And it should be normal when it's outside the ear. So to recap this really quickly, we're going to take the tuning fork, we're going to strike it, we're going to hold it on to the mastoid process. After three seconds, we are then going to flip it and hold it towards the ear, and we're going to ask them which one sounds louder. It should be air outside the ear. So let's add on that question really quickly. Which one sounds louder? Now that we've done the Weber and the Renee test that has to do with the cochlear, now we're going to go into the vestibular portion of the nerve and test the balance or the equilibrium. To do so, we use the Romberg test. Now with the Romberg test, there's essentially four things to keep in mind, four areas that the tests like to ask you about, like the NCLEX or your nursing exams. They'd like to see if you know the correct steps for the Romberg. So very simply, the patient's gonna stand preferably in bare feet or if they're in socks, okay, with them, their feet close together. There are other variations and other graduations of this test that can be harder. But for the most part, at bedside, the baseline test is bare feet or feet in socks, 
next to each other, arms at their sides. From there, you're gonna have the patient stand 30 seconds with their eyes open, okay? And you wanna see if there's any sort of swaying, if the patient steps, if they lose their balance. After those 30 seconds, then they're gonna have them, we're gonna have them close their eyes and see if there's any type of swaying, stepping, or looking for if they're losing their balance. So as we do all this, what we're looking for in the failure department is for the patient to be excessively swaying if they take a step or if they ultimately look like they are going to fall and or do fall. Now hopefully you're standing right there like you should be next to the patient watching them, especially if you're doing this test and you think this person is a little dizzy, they're a little off balance, they're probably gonna fall. This patient's a fall risk then, so make sure that you're nearby. You don't wanna be filling out paperwork because you were doing a Romberg test and a patient fell. So keep in mind that you're staying next to them because you're trying to see if they are off balance or having issues with their balance. Now as we look at all of these tests and what we're looking at here, we talked about the assessment and the failure. What is really the cause or what is the issue with the vestibular cochlear? So, for this video, we're specifically talking about the vestibular cochlear nerve, so we're only gonna be talking about issues or causes of this off balance or having problems with hearing. There can be many other disease processes that have to do with the cochlear and anything with the inner ear and the drum, but we're specifically just focusing on the nerve. And with the nerve, it's more than likely gonna be some portion of a swanoma, a tumor compressing on that nerve, pressing on that nerve and having issues with that sensory input coming back into the brain. Okay, ninja nerds, and that is the video on vestibular cochlear nerve, cranial nerve number eight. I hope you learned something from this video, and if you did like it, please leave a comment down below. And as always, until next time.